My name is uh, Sondre Berg and I'm here at uh, Baba Camp teaching workshops for the MOVE Festival. And today I'm gonna teach you guys how you can go from a regular push-up to a handstand push-up. And also how you should work towards learning a regular push-up. So I'll go through stepwise progressions as we call them, step by step, increasing the difficulty until you ultimately learn the handstand push-up. So let's get straight into it. The easiest way to do a push-up is to do it elevated, like this. Now the higher up you go, the easier it's gonna be. And the lower you go, the harder it's gonna be. So you sort of build your ways downwards until you are strong enough to do a push-up on the ground. Now there is Another way you could approach it as well, uh, you can start by doing knee push-ups. Most people are familiar with these. And then as you get stronger, you can try to move on to your toes and do a negative repetition. And put your knees in the ground and then go up. And then you repeat this and continue until you're strong enough to do it up and down on your feet. Now I recommend building your push-up so that you can do at least 10, 15 repetitions. The push-up is a super basic and important skill in calisthenics and bodyweight training. So learning how to do quite a few of them is always a very good idea to build up your capacity and strength. So what do you do when you can already do push-ups and you want to go even further? Well, we start elevating our feet and sort of go backwards uh, again, up towards a handstand push-up. For the elevated push-up, where we start with our hands high, we keep this straight push-up form, like this. But when we start going up with our feet, it's important that we bend our hips to make it more similar to a handstand push-up. So the most basic variation of these, that we call a pike push-up, should start like sort of in a down dog position, as it's referred to in yoga. And you should go down to make a triangle with your head and your hands. It's very important here not to go straight down with your head and flare out your elbows. This is not very beneficial for your shoulders. And if you keep doing this, it's going to be very difficult to balance the handstand push-up. Just to give you an example of this, if I try to do a handstand push-up and I go straight down, it's going to be super difficult to balance the handstand push-up. However, if I move towards more like a headstand, so I go down to a headstand in this triangle of support, it's much easier to balance. So it's better that we get used to this straight away, even when we just started approaching the handstand push-up. So again, we do this down dog sort of position. It's okay to bend your knees a little bit, down to this headstand triangle, and up again. And once this starts getting easier, we want to increase the elevation of our feet by putting our feet on top of something. In this case, we can start by going quite low, which will already considerably make it more difficult. So same technique, down to this triangle, and up again. And after this, we keep going up. So we go higher. And yes, you guessed it, we go even higher. And then, yes, we go even higher. So in this case, when we start getting to about hip level with our feet, it's a good idea to start actually using a wall or something similar to support your feet with. In this case, 
we go up like this. It's okay to bend your knees. We go down to this triangle and then up again. And the further we go closer to the wall, the more difficult it's going to be. And as you probably already noticed, it's looking much more like a handstand push-up already. If you're comfortable kicking up to a handstand towards the wall, you can also do this with your back facing the wall. In this case, I recommend having a 90 degree bend in your knees, keeping your feet at the same place, going down to the triangle while extending your knees and back up again. And this back to wall handstand push up is actually much more similar to a freestanding handstand push up than when you go facing the wall. So facing the wall is slightly harder and more heavy on your muscles. But back to wall is more relevant technique wise. So as soon as you start getting a lot of capacity strength wise, you can start experimenting with introducing some uh, balance and handstand push-up technique into the equation. So in this case, starting from this wall assisted position, we can extend one knee and then we can try to use the other foot a little bit less and just as much as we need. Eventually you might just need a couple of taps to perform it and thus we gradually increase our capacity for balance while doing the handstand push-up wall supported. Now at some point you might even want to experiment with trying to do these freestanding and at the beginning you might keep failing, you're trying and then oh, falling. That's okay. It's just important that this trying and failing is not your main practice. Give it a few shots, then go to the wall to burn out your muscles and increase your muscular capacity as well. This way you get the best of both worlds. You train the technique and also the strength. And this is to ensure you get the best progress possible. So now you have a few tools that you can use in order to build up your push-up, then your handstand push-up. But it's important to realize that this takes time. It's not going to take a month, it's not going to take half a year probably either. Depends on your starting point, but this is a long journey and I recommend sticking to it. Being consistent, if you do this a couple times a week, you should get very far in half a year a year and build your shoulders, your upper body strength and eventually learn the handstand push-up. You might be wondering how you should actually structure your workout. In case you are, I'll give you a very uh, easy uh, way of approaching it. So in strength training, body weight strength and calisthenics, we do things actually pretty similar to what people do in the gym when they're training with weights we use sets and repetitions. So when you choose between all of these progressions, which are different in difficulty, you should find a progression that challenges you. It's important that you spend some time and experiment with this. And the progression that you choose should be so difficult that you can barely do five to 10 repetitions. And then gradually, week by week, you build up your repetitions until you reach maybe 10, 15, and then you step up a level. Next progression. And that's how we work. So we call one set. That's as many, if you do as many repetitions as you can of an exercise, we can do this one set. Then you need to do a short break, maybe two minutes. It's a little bit individual. Uh, you can do some stretching when you're wait, while you're waiting, or you can just sit on your ass. It doesn't matter too much. But uh, after the break, you do it over again. And you can do this three times. So we do three sets of as many repetitions as we can. And 
For most people, that's more than enough if you do it two times a week. You can increase the number of sets as well, especially when you start getting a little bit more advanced. You can do four sets, even five sets. It's totally fine. Um, a little bit up to you. Now I guess you know a little bit more about how to approach a skill such as the handstand push-up. For different calisthenic skills, we use the same way of manipulating the exercises, making them harder and harder and harder to challenge ourselves. You can also look at it in another way. We have a goal, in this case the handstand push-up, but it could have been any other goal, like the human flag for example, and then we break it up into more manageable goals, part goals. It's important to have uh, achievable goals in the short term as well. So now it's all up to you to get started on your handstand push-up practice. I wish you the best of luck and thank you.